Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Easter Sunday, the Day of Resurrection. And uh, it is always a wonderful culmination or climax, the, the finale to the sacred triduum beginning on Holy Thursday, going through Good Friday. And then with Easter Vigil and then Easter Sunday, we have the wonderful celebration of Christ's resurrection. In fact, one of the traditions that I've had over the years is that in the Mass, uh, that we will have this wonderful time of a congregational response. It comes from the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church, and it's a tradition that, that I love. They do it often in Greek, uh, in English. Uh, the priest would say, he is risen, and then the congregation says, he is risen indeed, and usually saying it three times, increasing in volume. Uh, in the... Uh, Greek Orthodox world, they would say Christos Anesti, Alethenos Anesti, which means again, Christ is risen, indeed, he is risen. And so this is a wonderful way for us again to celebrate this great day where as Christians, we recognize the fact that Christ has conquered death and has risen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I like to call this the track and field uh, version of the resurrection. Because there's a lot of activity taking place. Remember the day before being the Sabbath day. It was a day of rest. <laughs> the uh, disciples were together, the apostles, in the upper room, and they were there to, of course, commiserate, try to figure out what in the world do they do with a dead Messiah. That's what they were thinking at the time. And they were, of course, confused because of all of the things that, uh, that had happened and probably had really yet to... Uh, piece together all that Jesus had told them earlier about the fact that, that he would have to die, but that he would rise again from the dead. So early on the Monday after the Sabbath day, which is Sunday morning, Mary of Magdala went to the tomb. And of course, when she arrived, uh, the stone was rolled away. We're talking about uh, four ton, about, uh, about four and a half feet in diameter piece of rock that had been rolled in place and it was rolled away so that the tomb was, was open to those that were there. And when she saw that the stone had been removed, she didn't go in. She just immediately knew something was up. So she immediately ran back to Simon and John. And that's John always refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved course writing the gospel rather than referring to himself by his name that's how he describes himself so she goes to Simon Peter and to John and tells them exactly what she found when she arrived at the tomb well immediately uh, when they heard this she, her, and by the way her assumption was that they had taken his body and we don't know where they put him because obviously when she saw the stone rolled away she didn't see anything on the inside, so she wondered what had happened. So she immediately goes to the two apostles, and they then go to the tomb. But John goes into great detail. 
he says, they both ran. And the other disciple ran faster than Peter. John being a younger man and reflecting back on, on those, those days, I'm sure he remembers this vividly, that he and Peter took off, but he was so uh, just moved by the report from Mary uh, Magdalene that, that he ran ahead of Peter. He got ahead of him and arrived at the tomb first. Can you imagine? He was running headlong through the streets of Jerusalem and to the, the area where the tomb was located, and uh, obviously very moved by the report. And there comes Peter uh, coming right up behind him, still uh, running full tilt. When they get to the tomb, it's interesting how John describes it. He stops and doesn't go in, but Peter goes headlong right past John and goes right into the tomb. Both of them, however, notice that the burial claws are there. In other words, the claws that had been draped around Jesus uh, to cover his body were still present, but the body was no longer there. And the interesting thing that the cloth that uh, covered his head was uh, placed separately uh, in the tomb, probably on, on the slab. And so the one that, uh, that covered its head was, was rolled up and put neatly in a different place. And uh, so they saw that, and all of a sudden, belief hits. And they think back of what Jesus had said about how he would rise on the third day. And it's beautiful here because the way John puts it, the other disciple went in, the one who arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. What a powerful way. That's all that it took for John was to go into the tomb and see the burial cloths the way they were. And he believed and knew that something had taken place. And again, he put in that, under, uh, that uh, extra verse, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. So these are things that, uh, again, we're seeing as a part of this wonderful celebration. And what uh, Peter and John don't know is that in just a few hours, they will see the risen Christ. This isn't the end of the Easter story. This is just the beginning. His resurrection was followed by his appearance at some points to over 500 people. And of course, it follows after that that he has the resurrection, then the ascension. So what a great day for us to celebrate. The wonderful gift of resurrection, recognizing the fact that death has been conquered. The great enemy that bothered man from time immemorial is no longer a bother because through Christ we have been opened up to eternal life. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, just like Christmas, Easter is not just one day. Easter is eight days from now until Divine Mercy Sunday, we have the octave of Easter. So we uh, pray the same uh, daily prayers every day. Uh, this is a time for us to let time stop, that we might spend this week truly focusing on Christ's resurrection from the dead. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.